Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad in the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part three of the isProbablePrime method and it's about multi-threading. Okay, let's go ahead and open up uh, my web browser, my website, javacjava.com. We'll select Java Tutorials. Scroll all the way down here to the big integer is probable prime part three. So in this tutorial, I'm going to build on concepts from the part two tutorial. I'm going to be using the thread class in this tutorial to greatly reduce the amount of time it takes to find prime factors of a large composite number. Consider the number 10,000. It is the product of 100 times 100, or in other words, the square root of 10,000 is 100. That's pretty simple stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's take the composite number 9,991 and try to come up with a strategy on how to determine what two prime numbers are factors of this number. Following the same logic from part two, we simply start dividing 9,991 by prime numbers starting with 2, 3, 5, 7, etc. Eventually we will hit 97 and 9,991 will divide out evenly with basically between 103 and 9 times 97. Now this takes quite a few calculations to find the prime numbers. Almost every modern computer has multiple cores with multiple processing threads. Now my CPU has eight cores with 16 processing threads and my program will finish a lot faster if I utilize all those threads. The idea is simple. We need to divide our large composite number by every prime number from two to the square root of the large prime number. If we take that range of numbers and divide them into groups that match the number of processing threads, which would be 16 in my case, then we can speed up the program by 16 times or more, and I'll explain what it means by or more there. I've not go gone over the concurrency classes yet, so I will use the thread class for multi-threading. Okay, let's come down here and highlight the source code. <coughs> This is a long one here, a lot of stuff here. And I'm not gonna go over like every little thing in this program here, I'll leave some of that for you guys there. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that and move this browser off screen here, but we'll go over all the, the major stuff on there. I got a shortcut to the command prompt. Well, if you're following my tutorials, I've already gone over this. Let's just jump right in there. Uh, let's make a directory here called uh, Prime3. Change directories to that and let's notepad prime 3.java. Okay. Alright, we'll paste all this stuff in. Alright, what I'm gonna do is just start running this right off the bat, and I've got some commented code in here, but uh, let's go ahead and clear our screen. Java C to compile this and Java to run it. <coughs> okay, so Here's our large composite that's 32 bits, right? The square root is 53,856, so approximate square root. It's gotta be at least a square root or greater than it. So you can see what I'm gonna do is thread one is going to factor all the numbers between three and 3,367, uh, 3, right? Uh, the second one's gonna go from here to here, um, thread three, thread so on and so forth there. So I've got this grouped up into 16 groups, right? And each thread will, basically divide and conquer and only divide these, uh, check to only divide by the prime numbers within the ranges for the various different thread. Okay, so let's come back up here to the source code. I've got this, uh, well, constant bit length here, 32 bit number, right? And the number of threads. And you can set this equal to the number of threads on your, uh, for your computer there. And the best way to do that is to right click on your start bar, go to task manager, come over here to the performance tab and open up the resource monitor. Okay, um, the resource monitor, and I already have another one open down here, uh, will show you how many CPUs you've got. And I got CPU zero through 15, right? So total is 16 processing threads there. All right, um, let's go back to the program here. A uh, lot, a lot of stuff here. It's all fairly similar to part two here. Uh, until we get down to here, the first thing we're going to want to do is take uh, whatever large composite number we get and divide it by 2. 2 is the only even prime number, right? So I'm just going to mod it by 2 and see that if that's equal to 0. If it is, we got our first prime factor of 2 and uh, whatever that's divided out. And then we'll return. We won't continue on with anything else than that. OK, 
Okay, but if it doesn't evenly divide it by 2, we know we're only going to divide, uh, you know, basically by odd numbers there, and specifically prime numbers, probable primes. So group count. Group count here is basically we're going to um, uh, take the square root, right, which is right up here, and we are going to divide that by the thread count, right? So basically uh, 16 divided by our thread count plus one and that will come out uh, to basically being how many it will be in each group right um, and I you can uncomment various different things that I've got here and see what the, for example the group count is or so on and so forth there right okay now um, here in this what I'm doing is I got a for loop here and I am making sure that every one of these things starts off with an odd number specifically the first group starts off with a three right so if i is equal to zero i'm setting the from value here our range from uh starting number here which will be this number this will always be from and this will be two okay fairly simple on that i've got the um the find uh, this this class here I wrote find prime factors. I've got that commented out and I've got a whole lot of other stuff commented out here right at the moment too. Um, just talk about a few different things here. Communication between threads. What I'm doing is I'm just I've simply got this class here called found factor and it has a public static string found it right. So no matter how many instances of found factor we create, right? Um, you can only have one value stored into found it there, right? So these are how the threads are going to communicate here. So the find prime factors extends thread, right? And I've got some basically like uh, instance variables here, right? Um, this one here is not an instance variable, but two is just basically setting that equal to a constant. Here's my instance variables, and here is my constructor where I pass in the large composite number. Starting number, ending number, the thread name, and this found factor um, reference variable to the found factor object, which contains this one. This is basically the state for found factor there, right? And uh, all pretty simple, set these values, start, and you can take a little more time to look at this program there as I run through it there. Start, of course, invokes run because we're extending the thread class. Um, which in turn evokes this search range method that I've written right here. Okay, so search range is very sim similar to the uh, prime method that I had in part two there, where we're checking for comp uh, is probable prime. And then if it divides out evenly, we found our first factor, there's our second factor. And we'll display which thread found the factor, the time to find the factor. Then it will change the FF, which is this public string up here found it right equal to found okay and it'll uh, return true break bada boom bada bang a um, couple other things here if uh, if start it becomes greater than end which will return back with a compare to method start being greater than end will be one it'll go ahead and break or if we take the current thread and we check to see if it's interrupted, we'll go ahead and break out of there too. And this is, we'll be calling this from the main thread there to break out of this, any sub threads that have started up there. Okay. All right. Uh, big integers, this method right here went over that in the last tutorial. I've got this other method here, thread ref, which returns back a, uh, basically an object there uh, for a string name of the thread that we're going to be creating up here. Okay. Let's go ahead and uncomment this out here. So era, for for these the 16 loops that we'll be doing here on thread count, we'll be starting up 16 new threads, right? And we'll be passing in the large composite number from to the name of the thread. We're just simply taking the string, um, <clears throat> the string thread plus i, which is of course the value here. So we'll have like thread zero through thread 15, and then of course this ff which is our a reference variable to this new found factor object. They're all pointing at the same one there, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uncomment this out here. Going back to the thread threading tutorials, you might have to look at those to refresh your memory there, but we're just getting the, the main thread there, displaying active threads, and then we're looping right here while the uh, thread count, active thread count is greater than equal to one, right? 
we are simply to checking if ff found it equals found, right? And if it does, then we are going to go through the thread count loop, right? We're going to get a reference to each thread, starting with thread 0 through thread 15. And as long as it's not equal to null, which it shouldn't be, we're going to invoke the interrupt method on that thread, which will then in turn come down here and cause this particular line to break out, right? So once one of the threads has found the uh, the composites numbers there, we're just going to go ahead and tell the rest of them to just interrupt and bada boom bada bing. Okay, um, they of course will shut themselves down and uh, then this thread count here, basically here I'm doing a try and I'm, I'm telling it to sleep for 200 milliseconds, basically a fifth of a second there and then try it all over again, see if it's equal to found. So this is the main loop and this is the main thread that's, that's on the main loop doing there, okay? So let's go ahead and just run this here. Let's compile, clear our screen recompile and run it. Okay, so here we've got, this is our large composite number here. Um, and you can see, you know what I wanna do? I actually want to comment out, let's see, this line right here, because I don't want too much going to the console. There, you guys got the basic idea there. Let me clear the screen. <clears throat> I save that. Okay, so there's our large composite number. We don't even really need to display the square root anymore, uh, but our first prime factor is this, and our second prime factor is that. Thread zero found the factors, and uh, 120 milliseconds, about almost a tenth of a second, about an eighth of a second, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and uncomment this. Let's comment out the square root too. And I've got all kinds of stuff in here uh, you can uncomment with and comment around and so on and so forth there. For example, down here, can uncomment some of these things, see what happens. I've got stuff in the main loop up here, uncomment this or this or this or so on and so forth there. Play around with this thing there. All right, um, let's go ahead and recompile that. Let's clear our screen, rerun it. That was a pretty small one there. Um, geez, man, it's not coming up with very good uh, numbers for, uh, there's there's one there, there where they're a little closer together there. Okay, so you can see we're, we're finding this stuff really, really, really fast. Let's increase the size of our bit length up here to, let's say, for example, 48. Okay, let's save that, let's clear our screen, recompile, and let's run it. Okay, so that took a little bit longer. We've got these two factors right here. This was our large composite number. There's our factors found it in 1.4 seconds. Okay, so let's bump this thing up to 64-bit, right? And let's recompile it and rerun it. Oh. oh, that was a f terrible number there. Let's try running this again. Not exactly the best ones. Okay, here we go. Now it's taking some time there. All right, we didn't get enough time taken on there to really make too much of a difference, but it found the factors there. Let's clear our screen. Let's see. Let's keep running this until we get one that uh, takes longer. There we go. Now we've got this, this one here. This number here has obviously got some larger numbers and stuff like that. So you can see over here on the processing cores, we're using 100% of all 16 processing threads there. Um, so that, uh, it'll be interesting to see what the result on this particular one is here. All right, while, while that's doing its little thing there, obviously we got a number that it's taking a while to run some, some calculations. I, I kind of want to go over this. Uh, Basically, by using the divide and conquer method, we can really speed stuff up, especially when we start dealing with larger numbers, like, you know, the 64-bit number. You know, this one's actually only 63 bits, but it's close enough there. Um, 
used to take back in the day when they originally had like 64-bit encryption, 128-bit encryption, 256-bit encryption. They thought that was good enough for the computers back then because they would actually take years instead of, you know, seconds or possibly minutes in this particular case there. So uh, I'm going to bring back over the website there. And I am actually starting a new website called the GPU.com, and this is all about GPU parallel programming. Um, <clears throat> GPU is a, a graphics processing unit. It's basically the video card inside of your inside of your computer here. So this uh, site isn't. It's just got to start it right now. I don't even have any tutorials there yet that are live on that. But uh, over here on microcenter.com, if we come over here and we look at the latest GPUs, specifically the ones we're interested in, the one by NVIDIA. And um, so we've got the latest ones over here, and if I just, for example, click on this one here, the Founders Edition one here. Pretty expensive video card, $700, but uh, I can tell you why, because if we come over to the specs, what you'll see here is the CUDA processors. The number of processors on this video card is not anywhere close to, like, for example, 16 or eight or you know whatever like a normal cpu this one has three thousand five hundred and eighty four processors on it that's right three thousand five hundred eighty four i mean that's sixteen eight that pales in comparison um so in particular applications like for example this one here where we're using all of our cpu power to basically try to find the two prime composites on this particular number here um the uh, so there, oop, just finally found it there. So we got 1,005, so 152 seconds on that one to find these these particular prime numbers here. I'm going to go ahead and just run this one again here. Um, so you can obviously see, like, in a, in a case like this where we can use multi-threading, parallel programming, right, at its very core there, um, the... The amount of time that we can speed this up is going to be awesome. But anyway, so I just want to give, kind of give you guys a taste of where I'm going to be going from here. Um, probably going to be doing just a, you know, a mix between the Java tutorials and then going into this GPU parallel programming, in which case I'll be starting up a whole new C programming tu tu tutorial series there. So, but anyway, um, that's pretty much about do it for this tutorial there. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this. We'll go ahead and kill this one. Uh, play around with the program there, plug some different values in, check different bit lengths. Um, uh, you can change this thread count to higher up, for example, like 64, play around with that, see what sort of, of um, performance you get there too. Obviously increasing the thread count will add more ranges there and, and increase the chance of finding it faster, but you may find that you actually have decreased performance because you're loading up a lot of threads versus the amount of processors that you have there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretty much leave it at that. No real final thoughts. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.